everything that we've grown up with. That is changing and it's changing because the world has changed and it's also changing because economists have changed. And they're beginning to realize the limitations of looking at the world in this way. We don't live in that world anymore. And in a sense, our, our economics have got to change and catch up with the world that we live in and the world that we're going to have to live in going forward. The short answer to the question in the second sentence is no. In particular, the economics profession worked over 50 years to obstruct and denigrate analyses of resource quality and environmental degradation, and still to this day advances policy proposals that are based on mythical reasoning and by and large ignorance of scientific engineering and human realities. It's just, it's just one of the many signs of the uh, primitive nature of economics, not just neoclassical economics here, but post-Keynesian as well. It's the two schools that normally build mathematical models of the economy, and both of them have built models of capitalism uh, in which production occurs by combining labour and capital in different ways with no role for energy. Now, that's completely false. So categorically, I think economics done an appallingly bad job on those issues and again tends to obfuscate rather than to clarify. Economics now is a very large box where there are many different uh, sub-disciplines and many different uh, research streams, uh, applications, methodologies, and so on. And again, they all hopefully help towards a common good the, of understanding better our uh, economies and society and provide, it, uh, and provide uh, the right tools to achieve a, a you know, a better and more prosperous world for all. I do believe that um, it can still play an important role uh, and actually has begun to play that role in helping society make progress on, on those um, important global challenges that you mentioned, whether climate change, poverty, uh, inequalities, the impact of technology, pandemics, as well as racial and class issues. Uh, I say this because it gives us a common framework for understanding issues and addressing gaps. Cause and effect as well as cost and benefit analysis are also useful concepts in this regard. These global challenges can be incorporated and we can see some work already being done uh, in, into the concepts of markets and profits. All these problems have an economic aspect of re inside. So you can't do without the economy simply nothing. Unresolved and growing global problems are becoming an increasingly serious factor affecting the economy. In general, it is very difficult to imagine how problems and issues related to the economy can be isolated from the global agenda. The world is changing, moving, and economics, like other sciences, are means of cognition, understanding, awareness of the changes taking place on the eve of global related events. Economics is a useful tool. Uh, having a sense of how much it will cost to address climate change, for example, being able to discuss alternative policies. Where we tend to go off the rails is where we think economics has all the answers. That all we need to worry about is making the economy more efficient. All we need to worry about is um, aggregate welfare and using measures, for example, of human well-being that until quite recently were all about production and consumption and not about, say, lifespan or life satisfaction or rates of depression or inequality, rates of justice or equity. I think the story is not that economics provides solutions to anything. Uh, but it provides ways of thinking about particular problems. In all of those debates, uh, pricing is going to be really essential. So uh, we've had an era in which energy prices were really very low, and that encouraged people to move all over the world and to consume a lot of energy. Um, if you're going to want to restrict uh, the emission of CO2, or to move to cleaner or more efficient forms of energy, then you're going to have to do that through a price mechanism. And the price mechanism is really unbelievably effective. 
uh, at, at uh, generating uh, solutions. There is no free lunch. Everything has a cost. So, for instance, while having a, a, a completely fossil fuel free society may be in everyone's best interest in the long run, the economic cost of that goal may be too much for many people to bear. And in a democracy, in a free society, it's, it's not easy or perhaps even desirable to enforce um, the will of what may be right in the long term over what might be right uh, in the short term. Economics does a spectacular job in illustrating the trade-offs and quantifying the trade-offs to the extent that anyone can quantify the trade-offs, right? It's imperfect. It does not do a good job of telling you which policy you should undertake because those that depends on the weight that your society wants to put on the winners and the losers. Economists do not know the weight. Economics was used, it was thought economics is about money, price, something about variable goods and so forth. But uh, Gary Becker of Chicago extended economics to many other areas, racial discrimination, marriage, and so forth, that anything it is a matter of choice and uh, some kind of scarcity or constraint can be analyzed by economics technique very well. So I think this was a success of economic science.